All right, welcome to the July 25th Aries Cloud Agent Python Users Group Community Meeting. A uh, few things on the agenda, mostly to do with um, PRs and issues and moving things forward. Um, we are recording the call and a reminder to everyone that this is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger meeting so that the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger code of conduct. Let's be good to one another. Um, anyone have any announcements to make? Or if anyone is new and wants to step up to the microphone and introduce themselves, please do so. Nothing to say today, all right. Okay, um, we'll start with release 090. Um, it is has been released. Um, so 090 went out um, yesterday. Um, I'll post an announcement to the um, to the board, uh, to the Discord channel and various other places to let people know it's out there. Um, in doing that, we did add um, deprecation of the ND SDK. So the two things that are key in this one, um, well, three things <laughs> at least, um, these are all in the change notes, the change log, but in particular, um, 3.6 to 3.9, Python 3.6 to 3.9 um, is now uh, the official change. Um, we are now no longer using the URSA library, but rather using CL signatures. And um, there is an official um, deprecation of the ND SDK notification on launch. So if you use the ND SDK on launch, you'll get a notice to um, migrate away from it. And there is a migration document, which Daniel has been good enough to put into the, um, into the uh, notes that describes how to um, do a migration from the ND SDK to Asgar. So all of those um, contribute to the to Akapai release 09. Um, so again, definitely encourage everyone to, um, if you are using uh, the ND SDK to move away from it and uh, definitely suggest um, that if you're starting up, don't even start with the ND SDK, go right away right ahead to using Ascar. Ascar and, and the related um, components are faster, more robust. Um, there's been a number of fixes in the CL signatures that um, including some things that will be announced in the near future. Um, it is much better to be off of the SDK and on to Ascar. Any questions or comments about that? Um, uh, I will see in the chat, Marie it's, has, uh, said hello, but doesn't have a working mic. Glad to have you here. And I'm glad to see the PRs you've been putting in lately and the conversations you've been starting. Welcome. Um, the auto flags, I did a, a short presentation, which I realize is not up here. So let me, oh, and I'm not even signed in. Oh. Okay, this is embarrassing. Oh, man. At least I know my pin. Oh, and none of those are even right. How do you get to the, uh, I've switched password managers, everything's a mess. Ah, um, what am I gonna do here? Well, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to do a brief presentation on uh, on uh, the auto flags. So I switched over to Proton as a password manager from uh, from Bitwarden.
All right. Sorry about that. And uh, I'm obviously still in transition and definitely can't handle it when I'm under pressure. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Um, jump in any time here on this. Um, on this presentation, because I'm just sort of um, sharing what I know and, and a bit of the history. Um, when we created it, um, the auto dash dash auto um, basically allows you to um, set a flag such that um, the controller does not have to be involved in the middle of a uh, of a flow. Um, so it, it allows basically the uh, Akapai itself to simply respond to messages received. So the uh, assumption was when we started these things and we were talking more about protocols and evolving the initial protocols was that every step of a protocol was an opportunity to insert business rules that that you know every message was uh, was there um to move the protocol forward but every step would be controlled by you know whoever is is the business process or the person behind the protocol um so that when you got, uh, for instance, an offer, you would use some business rules or uh, for a credential, you would you would use some business rules to decide if you wanted it. And then you would send a request and the other side would consider if even though they had sent the offer already, they would consider whether the request was acceptable or not. And so every step um, would involve the controller. The original developers didn't like that while developing. So the auto flags were added. Um, so that for development they could they could go faster. They didn't have to worry about writing a controller just to test out the internals of Akapai. And so the auto flags were put in, and they were put in as debug flags. Um, one day, uh, one of the developers added the send endpoint end for issuing a credential, and and he was smart enough to realize that when an issuer says, "I want to issue a credential." They don't really care about all the ins and outs of the protocol. As long as it's following the happy path, the expected path for issuing a, a, a protocol, the issuer doesn't have to know that the offer was sent, that the request was received, that the issued credential was put together and, and, and sent off. They just wanted to send a credential. Here was the data and Akapai could take care of the rest. And that really was um, a way to specifically handle the auto. Um, so we wind up with a whole lot of autos that got added, and I've got a list on on two screens here um, in various categories. And a big question now goes, should autos be um, expected in a controller? Obviously, you can turn them off, but um, you know, should we take them out of debug status? Should they be used in production? And if so, which ones? And, um, you know, if there's any guidance, we should give uh, developers on it. So any anyone have comments? So these are the ones related to establishing a connection. These are the ones related to issuing a credential and presenting a proof. And then on the next page, um, some things around actually, I probably should have put this one on the connections one auto pin connections. Um, this relates to the introduction and then finally some related to both mediation and endorsements um any what do other people think about the auto options and do you use them in production uh oh go ahead wade um we use the auto options quite often um, I don't have the list right in front of me, but we, okay. um, have several of them like auto provision, auto respond, auto accept, um, things like that. Okay. And your advice would be to use for generally use them, not as debug, but actually use them in production and, and leave them. There. Yeah. We've been using them all across the board for years now. Okay. Okay.
unfortunate about the Zoom link. I'm not sure what Zoom link that is anymore because I've been back and forth on so many Zoom links. Unfortunately, um, Hyperledger keeps changing what what they want them to be and think it's no big deal to change passwords and it's problem or to change Zoom links. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, Okay, so what I'll do, um, Wade, I would like you to get a list of them. So I'll I'll put a place in a in a ticket to to accept those or to, so that you can put those in. Um, the endorsement ones. We're going to have a session tomorrow, and actually, here's a a request. Actually, I've got this in here um, at the Aries Working Group. There, we're uh, going to have a discussion on alternatives to the endorser auto flags. Um, so that'll um, happen tomorrow on um, the Aries Working Group call. So I invite people to that one to talk about endorsement. Obviously, mediation is another one that's interesting. Um, similar to endorsement, we want to have some level of control over that. Um, so it would be good to have that. Um, auto disclose features. Um, that's almost a, a, a no brainer. I don't know how many people are using auto disclose, but it's probably something that should be almost automatic. Maybe we should use it instead of ping on on um, on back and forths um, for finding out what features another agent is using and try to promote its use. Um, do we think we should remove uh, remove the um, auto flags, uh, or sorry, the debug on it. So it sounds like we, we should for most of them. Um, so that would be a more a documentation change, but basically we'd be remove, altering the category in which they um, land in the config file. I would agree. Yeah, okay. And then my thought was to document um, when using them, you know, the auto auto paths. Um, the other impact that comes into play is where a, a user interface needs to come into play. Obviously, um, wallet there's wallet and human use cases and then enterprise and business rules. And of course, those two can meld because um, in an enterprise use case, um, you might want to pass it off to a human. You, you might want to use business rules. You commonly would use business rules to decide what to do on things, but possibly hand things off um, to humans as you're going. Um, one of the things that I had promoted, I had been long an advocate of not using auto flag. So I'm part of the problem here or created the problem, but um, one of the things that I thought we should have done was simply create a controller that had auto settings off and um, and and have basically the controller implement the auto. In other words, do the do the thing necessary to um, respond in an auto way, so that then um, everyone could start with that controller and then build in the rules they wanted for their own. Um, particular use case. Um, now I'm an advocate of still doing that, defining a, a, a generic uh, controller, but assuming the auto settings are on so it doesn't need to do that, and then default rules for a typical enterprise agent. So at some point, um, it would be good to build, to define what that should be and build it out. But if, at this point, I don't think, I don't see that happening. In a, in, it's not a big issue right now. Okay, any other comments on open? Um, is this a a burning topic or just something that that should be at the back of the should be more or less the, the back of you right now? So I think um, uh, well this this topic came to my mind at least when we were talking about a change to the automatic behavior and and whether it should be considered uh, production usable or not uh, so, so that's the the biggest change in my mind is just like a shift in perspective and then making sure that uh the automatic behavior is actually well behaved um okay. for instance with the pr that i have open 
there was an opportunity for uh, a misbehaving holder to change the credential between the offer and the request phase um, of a credential exchange using JSON LD. Um, right. So I think we need to. That's probably the number one point of, of caution I think we need to have when we're going through um, and just making sure that it can't be abused in any way, um, having the automatic responses. Um, it's not a new problem um, because a, a controller that was inadequate would also have been able to miss those same sorts of issues, I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, the other thing that's been on my mind, and I was I was a little distracted by like half of my team being in a different Zoom room, but uh, uh, I was trying to, uh, I, I was thinking about how there's um, there's some overlap between the idea of automatically proceeding through a protocol in a certain way and governance, uh, machine readable gov governance, and and um, following rules defined by a governance framework. Um, so I, I think there will be some interesting opportunities in the future as that continues to develop for, um, uh, you know, there's the standard just business rule automation stuff that people could be using, but it, it could also make sense for us to use governance files as a way for, um, you know, if nothing else, uh, to indicate to a holder who's uh, connecting to an issuer or verifier or something that it's okay to automatically accept that connection according to the governance framework or or to proceed with a certain kind of presentation because the governance framework said it was okay yeah. um, those sorts of things so um previously i think when the auto flags were considered a debug thing uh the quote-unquote natural place for that governance file handling to take place was in the controller. Um, but I think with moving that closer to ACPI with the automatic flags considered a production valid thing, uh, it might make sense for processing of, of governance rules to be something that makes it into a plugin for ACPI at some point or something like that. That would be, that's pretty cool. I mean, um, one of the things when we're talking tomorrow, um, Emiliano is going to talk tomorrow on the Aries Working Group about endorser um, rules, and it's similar to exactly what you're saying, which is we're trying to put them into a format that can be machine readable so that we can separate out um, the way the rules are generated from the processing of the, the automated processing of the rules. Um, so that... That's one example of that, but I know you guys um, and DCO has done an awful lot of work on machine readable governance and and how to apply that. Could be you're right. A plugin here would be very useful. Yeah, it's. I think it's something that we've largely been approaching from a controller perspective, um, but I, I I don't think it would dramatically change things, and it would make it a, a more widely available thing if it was also just generally plug in a bull to any Akpi deployment. Uh, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Jason, go ahead. Got to unmute there. Uh, so just so I'm clear in my head, is the idea there that the instead of using auto flags, that we would use rules, like a governance thing, so that <laughs> they're like the auto flags would get replaced by a rule that would say yes we want to do this and then it would get refined for whatever certain credentials certain things right i don't know that it would necessarily replace the auto flags especially if it was a, a um, functionality that was included in a plugin as opposed to core Akpi. so Akpi might have the auto flags and just you know have the very straightforward just automatically doing stuff and then the plugin could provide uh, more specific rule-based automation mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah. i'll just try trying to wrap my head around to it would be quite a step to go to um you know like a, a rules engine or a governance thing but I think that's the right way to go because I know from other projects that that's kind of a desire by the business side of things um and then to me the next logical thing was an auto flag would just be basically point at a default rule set 
I just don't, sometimes I don't like seeing things where it's like, there's an exceptional case. Like if there's going to be logic that's going to control the flow, then maybe an auto flag should just basically point to a default flow. So we don't have these two sets of logics that it's, the, the flow is always dependent on whatever we decide, um, a governance structure or rules engine, et cetera, et cetera, you know, kind of thing. But, you know, obviously that can be done in, in stages, I think. So I was just trying to wrap my head around that. I think it's a great idea just to start moving into something more comprehensive than just <laughs> a flag does one thing. Yeah. As far as um, I think uh, another example that we should keep in mind is something like revocation where where instead of trying to follow the protocol um we we hid the complexity because we realized that you know exposing all of that logic and requiring the controller to do all make all of the decisions is just the wrong thing to do it just makes things too complicated and um harder to implement so that's another example where, you know, it's a much better idea for us to to build more into the the core functionality, um, so that so the controllers don't have to deal with that level of complexity. Cool. Any any final comments from anyone on that one? Okay. Um, so PRs and issue and issues are the remainder. Um, this one came out. I, I know there was another issue, um, Daniel. You posted this yesterday about marshmallow usage to remove the deprecation warnings. Um, love to see that. I believe somebody else has already put in a um, an issue about marshmallow and and some additional comments on that. Did you find that one, Daniel? Uh, another issue on marshmallow. I don't believe I've seen that. I think one. there's another issue. Um, shoot. Um, perhaps it was in a PR. I'll have to go look for it. But somebody had put in here's here's a way to clean up a pile of these. Oh, that was me. Um, that was on a, a PR a while ago. I, I linked to. Uh, that PR oh, actually yes. there in, in my comment. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so it, uh, on a previous pass of attempting to update ACPY to newer versions of Python, I think um, we ended up needing to abandon this branch. It just got stale and, and we took a more incremental approach as a community and, and that ended up being better. But uh, we went through and updated a bunch of dependencies and a bunch of these deprecation warnings. And uh, um, I haven't looked at this in a while. I put together something that helped me to to address those issues. I frankly don't remember at all what I did, but I, I do have a link to uh, that tool at least. So yeah. Okay. Um, I, I assume this is a help wanted one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll try to define you know exactly the options here. I think there's there's another PR. Um, and I'll try to find it, Daniel, that has um, a bit of an assessment on the marshmallow errors. So it's not th that link that you've got, but it was from, from somebody else in the community, and I'll have to look it up, that said, you know, here's my experience with it. These are because of this. And here's some things that could be done to clean some of them up. Um, but I suspect this is a help wanted. I think your tool could be an alternate or a a a temporary way to do it if we can build it into a GitHub action. Um, well, so the 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 specific warnings that I've got that I was pointing out in this issue, at least, um, is just a matter of needing to change up the arguments to um, the the field. Um, what are they called? The field things. <laughs> Uh, yeah. for for fields inside of a marshmallow schema, so that that should be just a one time thing, and then in the future, as as new schemas are added or modified, uh, we just need to continue to follow suit and not use the deprecated um, attributes any longer. So yeah. for this issue and and for the vast majority of the deprecation warnings that are being emitted on tests, um, that should be a one time fix. Um, uh, 
but I, I think I think you're right in saying that there are other warnings being emitted by Marshmallow uh, related to um, schema name collisions and and those sorts of things, and that might be what the uh, the other PR and, and comments you're referring to were we're talking about. So, um, okay. So the idea is basically it's going through the 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 routes um, dot py and and making an, a, a mechanical adjustment to a whole bunch of places. Is that Right. So the one example I copied um, was, was just a singular example, but there's, uh, you know, maybe a few hundreds or, or thousands even uh, of these sorts of warnings being emitted for a bunch of different locations. And apologies, what do you have to change to fix this? Um, uh, so let's see this one. Metadata keyword argument is deprecated. So changing from metadata to I think it's supposed to be like a Oh, what is it supposed to be? There's alternate attributes to to stuff the metadata fields into now, uh, more specific ones or, or uh, a different bucket of things. So, um, oh, it's, okay, this is what it says. Sorry, I shouldn't try thinking on the spot. Uh, <laughs> so keyword arguments were being automatically turned into metadata on fields, and oh, now nice. those just need to go into a specific metadata argument instead okay i was wondering why because i didn't see metadata in there you actually they actually want the metadata argument specifically as opposed to the right other way yeah okay yeah. okay cool okay well we've got to help wanted on that we can see if we can make a little bit of progress on that um and if anyone wants to jump at it and you've got somebody uh willing to take a look awesome Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Um, pull requests. Uh, Sam, before um, we move on, uh, sorry, Stephen, before we move on from that, um, have we talked about the performance of Marshmallow? We have not. So uh, when I was doing performance testing against Akapai, we saw that uh, Marshmallow was using, I think it was something between like uh, seven to ten percent of the CPU time of Akapai. Um, and uh, Adam had made a suggestion internally um, about uh, a compatible Marshmallow layer that had better performance um, that we could potentially switch to. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to bring it up to the community in case there's interest in looking into that further. Definitely. <laughs> Adam, what did you find? Do you know that, or could you add a ticket at least? To... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, when it comes to me, I will create a ticket, but I think it's not a heavy lift with okay. uh, a possible benefit of speed increase. I'll, I'll create an issue. That'd be great. I've heard lots of grumblings about marshmallow, but it's not something I know a lot about. Toasted marshmallow, marshmallow, but 15 times faster. Okay, there you go. Looks like Daniel's got it. Okay. Um, pull requests. Let's take a look at the pull requests. Um, so there's a couple of of new ones. Um, these are, are going through discussion. So I think these are under review. Any comments on these two or uh, just let the review process follow? Um, some quick comments on that top one there from uh, M. Kimpa. Um, so th this one is one that I'd appreciate some additional input on from anybody who's familiar enough with did info and, and how Akpai is storing dids and verkeys. Um, so Mattis, Mattis Kimpa, um, he is proposing that we make retrieval of did info by verification method, essentially be a pluggable thing. Um, and I, I think that that solves a problem. There's definitely a problem that needs solving and this would do it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a better way for us to go about 
um, making it easier to to sign and, and verify credentials with um, using DIDs that we own. Um, if there's a better way for that. Um, uh, I've left some comments that they're, they're kind of vague. Um, I can go in, into a little bit more depth, but uh, yeah, just a, a call for more eyes on this issue would be appreciated. And I can spend some more time thinking about it and fleshing out my thoughts as well. Okay. Cyro, that's um, Jason Cyrotuck. That's kind of your space right now. You've been way too deep in dids and did docs and, and so on. So it might be one you could take a look at too. Um, you put this in yesterday, Daniel. Okay, this is the one to do with uh, um, this would this is what triggered the um, open discussion. This is ready to go, I assume. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I think this is in a good spot. Okay. Um, we'll get that one. I probably shouldn't have hit that because we probably don't need it because we're probably going to merge something else. Um, but um, maintainers, if you could take a look at that one. Um, Shanjot, what is the status of this one? I think you're on the call. Uh, yes, so the rework uh, I've done is basically now supports uh, selecting uh, ledger uh, through the uh, endpoint. I added a, a few endpoints related to that. Uh, but basically what I'm doing right now is uh, testing that because there is an issue with uh, multi-tenant, multi-ledger, where if you try to register the uh, 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 the dead, the local dead, it, uh, it uh, errors out. So basically I'm doing some testing with the rework uh, with that. Uh, but uh, the uh, the right part is done. So basically, the new feature that had to be added that is done. Basically, trying to fix the read issue with uh, the rework. Okay, and there's an issue on the previous one, so that should take care of it. So though anyone um, interested in this, this is a feature that allows a tenant in a multi-tenant environment to uh, set a bunch of the Akapai, you know, sort of what were previously global parameters set them at the tenant level or configurations, I mean. And in particular, these ones allow a tenant to choose what ledger they are writing to from a set of ledgers configured in Akapai and um, as well, what ledgers they are reading from. Um, so that will um, allow the tenant more control over what they're doing. And, and that's um, a, a big use case at, at um, in BC Gov as, as far as the traction uh, component that we're building. Yes, Lohan, that's at the tenant level. So um, the tenant, um, those with you know access to control the tenant behavior can, can configure the tenant to talk to, to write to a specific ledger. to quickly clarify this is this is behaving like a config that you set and then it applies to each of the methods that cause a, a ledger write as opposed yeah. to uh, uh, an attribute on each of those endpoints that do it right just, yeah, one, just single add, one single so just to clarify so i can have multiple tenants and one tenant can write to bc graph ledger one can write to sovereign ledger etc yes yes Amazing. Cool. Okay, so that's still a work in progress. Keep an eye on that one and, and do review. I think this one's ready to go. We didn't want to put it in 090, but I think this is ready to go. Um, has anyone, any of the maintainers looked at this? I know I shouldn't have clicked update on that other one because this is the more likely one to go. Um, Andrew gave it a thumbs up confirmed that it worked on his M1 Mac. Um, any other, uh, anyone else take a look at this? So I, I haven't explicitly marked approval on this one, but I, I think this is a good change. This is one that um, multiple members of my team have, um, they've worked around it uh, in different <laughs> ways. Um, yeah. Um, so I think having this this change in the script, um, it makes sense, and I think it'll be fine. So 
think it's good. I got I got tired of telling people about the workaround. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd like to see it. Okay. Um heck, we might even enable auto merge on that. So that one will go in in a few minutes and I'll try to resist hitting update. Um Sherman, you're working on this one right now, Jason. I am working on it as we speak. Yeah. Okay. We talked um, about this a few weeks ago, um, sorted out what we want to do, and uh, Jason's working on that. Um, yeah. Ben Shot and Jason Syro, I think this one should be closed. This was kept around because we knew Jason was going to be working on it, but I don't think this is needed anymore. Correct. Uh, I think so, but uh, maybe uh, Jason might be. You're not doing anything with this one, right, Jason? Sherman or Cyrotech? Okay. OBE, not out of band. Man. Okay. Um, I did want to take a look at a couple of these other old ones that, particularly if we've got people here. Um, we've got changes requested on this one that haven't been done. Yeah, so Steve, Mr. Tim here. We. Um, don't have a resource to work on this right now. No other way to put it, a little awkward. So I, I, I don't know if you want to close it or if you want to come back to it another day, but unfortunately it's going to be in limbo for a little while. Okay. Out of band protocol sounds fairly important. Maybe we should take it over. Got a few changes, but it, um, you still need it done, I assume? It, I mean, it, it's it's at some point it's important to have a problem report there. Yeah, it was something that was a gap. Not not as much of a priority as it was when we first put this in, though. Okay. Let me think about that one. I might close it. We'll see. Um, this one we agreed to close. Sadly, um, eventually we'll get back to this. Um, did com v two, but right now. Um, I don't think, as Daniel said, it's 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 not really ready to go, and I don't think any other work's going to happen on it. So we'll close it. Key phrase being here. Hey. All right, we'll close that one. Um, this last one, Shanjot, while you're here, um, is this one still worth moving forward? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think this was linked to one of uh, Andrew's uh, PR. I think I mentioned it in one yeah, of the comments. Yeah. If, yeah, I think it's been so long. Maybe we can just vote it. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm, I'll take a look through these other ones to get more of an idea so we're not doing it on the fly uh, in the future, and I'll I'll do a better job at, at being able to provide context for these. Um, is there anything that... I, this one came through. I, I really like this one. Um, for those who haven't looked at this, and have an interest in DIDs and, and regex, well worth reading the uh, information from ChatGPT that was generated. Maritz, thank you for doing that. Um, uh, the only thing I wasn't sure of here, so the idea here is um, there, there was a couple of things that I put a comment in. Um, the core idea was to A, make the 
did uh, the regular expression easier to understand. And this idea here for defining how defining the regular expression so that you could see the parts of it and get, have names for it. The only thing I proposed was adding more information, such as the fact that, um, <clears throat> for example, this string here excludes um, uh, lowercase l and uppercase o and zero um, to um, prevent uh, make uh, you know uh, confusing characters in a did um so that's good um we have the did solve which is interesting that um that we explicitly are looking for that presumably for performance reasons so adding some comments around this in the code would probably be useful just so people know um that's a good thing i think definitely without question and then the other idea is um applying that regex to this kim go ahead um i should shouldn't we accept those that have um characters that are undesirable as potential dids but only uh uh have that search pattern uh be applied on the generation of the dids in other words you're saying that the did spec does not disallow that, therefore we shouldn't. I, I don't know, uh, but that's my question, is if the did yeah. spec allows those special characters, we should still search for them, right? Yep. Is this base 58 encoding? Characters for base 58 encoding? I bet you that's what it is. Yeah, it is. Um, so I think the the did solve pattern, so that portion of of the pattern that includes did solve specifically, does have those limitations. But I don't think the general ones do have the same base fifty eight alphabet. Limitation. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So I think we're okay with that. This is specifically for did solve, whereas this is the general did, and and this accepts either. Right. Do we, yeah, I mean, the, the big thing for me comes down to is the, do we use did solve enough that we need the performance benefit from having a separate um, match versus the more general match across all? I don't, I, again, I don't have an answer to that question. Um, that's a performance question. And then the second thing, so, I mean, I guess we leave it as is for now, because um, because of them, something, and then the second part is this, this nicely breaks it up so we know why it's done. Um, and then, um, the, the other question is, do we update all of these places in the code to use the did regular expression? And I would think we would want to use the same one everywhere. Any question on that? So in, in the comment that I left there, <clears throat> um, I, I think updating the regular expressions in all places, um, it, that would be kind of a forward looking change. Um, because at this point in time, the rest of the code surrounding like connections and stuff is still expecting um, that dids to be shaped a particular way. Um, and it would it would fail in other ways, even if it passed the regular expression validation. So um, I think there's definitely opportunities to make sure that we're consistent with uh, the regex that we're using for these different schemas. But that alone... It doesn't like solve okay. the problem, I guess. And that's because in certain places we are wired to did peer or or what amounts to now did unqualified dids right now for did com and only certain dids are supported elsewhere. Right. 
and we haven't removed the dependency on those other dits, which is the larger problem. Right. Okay. Uh, the the uh, other example, in addition to the unqualified dids, is for the endpoints that result in uh, ND ledger writes. Uh, the did dids are expected to be the unqualified NIMs, basically as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The biggest thing then is is the action out of this. Um, as we've said, a hundred percent on on doing this. Um, the bigger issue needs to be outlined because we're, we're getting more and more to you know we absolutely need to um, support did web and hopefully the upcoming did web s. Um, that we hope to see soon, um, and we have to make this more generic. I would really like an issue that, you know, sort of outlined that, Daniel. Um, so calling out where we still have specific did uh, yeah. uh, limitations? Like... Like what? What is the action we have to take on this in order to move this forward? Right. In order to yeah. to to make it that we're not tied to specific dids. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think that'll be a, a probably a bit of a uh, a more in depth analysis, but I, that's something I can see if I can add to my to do list. Um. All I was thinking was try to put as much as you can into a new ticket to say, here's what we ought to do for that. I think this one talks about the regex and, and that, and I think that should be done. And, and the, the, I think even using the regex in these patterns or in the other places wouldn't hurt us, right? It just means, because they would still pass. Right. It just means that you still can't use did web or, or something like that or any right. other did until the other problem is addressed. And what I'm thinking is if you could put in your first, you know initial thoughts of what action needs to be taken and you know some sort of example, um, you know, don't spend long on it, but just put a placeholder in as an important ticket that we need to move forward. Sure. Okay. That's I, I yeah, don't spend a lot of time on it. Um but I, I was not aware of that one of 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 how deep that was, but I've always wondered about it. So, okay, yeah, I can open a ticket for that. Awesome, thank you. And Maritz, thank you for doing that. The uh, yeah, comparison of the results would be pretty cool. Um. Uh, this one we'll we'll talk about tomorrow, um, so people can join on that one. Um, but basically, this is part of the community transition. It's the idea that um, anything we're sending unqualified right now will wind up being sent qualified. And um, Jason's making really good progress and and exposing the core issues in this of how to do that. Um, what we're trying to make it is that we eliminate unqualified dids entirely so that when we initiate sessions, um, uh, did com connections, we would use a pure did two to convey the did doc essentially, the, the, the key components. And a did doc two has a, or sorry, did peer two has a, um, corresponding did peer three associated with it for or for performance and and um, size of messages um, shrinking those down so the plan is to do that but um, another part of the plan is to actually um, convert unqualified dids to qual to did uh, did peer three qualified dids and so um, Jason's got a bunch of information on how to do that. Um, I'm hoping in one of these days soon um, to go through and close issues. There's a few in here. 
Um, that I saw, yeah, this, this one's done, right? Yes. Yes. Woohoo. Um, so I, I'm gonna take a look and see what other ones we can close because we've just got too many open right now and a, and a lot of them are, are questions and so on. Look at that, we can close another. Um, so um, take a look at closing some of these down and and we'll get these merged and, and closed. That's about all I had for this meeting. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, we are having maintainers meetings, um, alternate um, weeks. So if anyone is interested in attending the maintainers meeting, it is on the uh, calendar and you're more than welcome to join, but it's, um, it is just a half hour meeting and it's entirely focused on exactly what pull requests are there or what are needed and, and sort of maintain or distribution of um, the review of activities and then um, sort of direction of where we want to go next in these. Um, our, our next big effort is, is definitely finishing off um, putting an on creds RS into Akapai. Um, that has a, a, a lot of work to go into it. Um, and so anyone that is interested in joining in that activity, um, there's a number of tasks uh, to be done and we'll start, and we'll be assigning those out. So um, that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, obviously, always taking a look at what's going on and and um, um, uh, uh, keeping an eye on the issues that people are opening and what they want addressed. Um, Daniel, as, as to your last question, um, uh, so a did peer three is um, deterministically calculated from a did peer two. So after sending a did peer two, you just always send the did peer three afterwards, and then um, the receiver just has to or whenever a did peer three is passed, it should be able to find the associated did peer two. Hopefully that makes sense. You can't go from three to two though necessarily, can you? You, you because you'd have to, okay. You, so when you, when you receive a did peer two, you can calculate the did peer three and then you can store an index from three to two. But right. you would have to, if you didn't do that step, then you'd have to go through and check all of your known did peer twos to see if it hashed to that value. You have to, re you have to record, basically you have to record both and be able to find them pointing to the same ticket, to, to the same record. Okay, gotcha. And and for ne for a while, we're going to have to do unqualified plus two and three. Well, no, sorry, unqualified and three and and then two and three after that. That's my understanding. Um, Robert. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I was looking for the recording from the last meeting two weeks ago. And at the bottom of the meeting page, the text transcript looks uh, like it's for that meeting, but the YouTube link looks uh, more like a workshop or something and doesn't match that transcript. All right, let me, uh, let me find that. Um, the Hyperledger folks take care of that. Um, so I didn't realize, so I will check that and I'll start checking meetings to make sure we got the right ones. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks for letting me know. Excellent. All right. Everyone have a great day. Good Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.